Coming up, we look ahead to CES and what might be in store for Mass Effect 3. Plus, we head back to Edmonton to see what it takes to write a massive, yet personal story for a Bioware game. Next, on Bioware Pulse. You're locked in to Bioware Pulse. I'm David Silverman. CES is taking place as we speak. What will be there in store for Bioware? Let's fire up the headlines. CES just began two days ago in Las Vegas, and it looks to be a big week for Mass Effect 3. Will we debut a new trailer? Show a new level? Fresh new character? All new gameplay? Well, whether or not you can take the heat of the desert or the draw of the casinos, no one thing. There will be more info about the Kinect at the show than ever before, and its functionality will make your Mass Effect 3 experience that much more realistic. As for more details, well, you'll just have to wait until next week as we recap the show right here on Bioware Pulse. We promise, though, it'll be worth the wait. If you haven't pre-ordered Mass Effect 3 yet, get out there and reserve your copy to secure the in-game items. The powerful M55 Argus Assault Rifle comes with every pre-order of the game from participating retailers. And if you pre-order via Origin, you will also receive the AT-12 Raider Shotgun, perfect for close-range targets and superior rapid firepower. For the full list of pre-order incentives, head on over to www.masseffect.com or follow at Mass Effect on Twitter. Last week, on Pulse, we broke down the voiceover process for Mass Effect 3. This week, we sit down with lead writer Mac Walters for his take on the writing process for Mass Effect 3. It's time for Insider. <laughs> Uh, my name is Matt Walters. I'm the lead writer on the Mass Effect franchise. One of the goals we set out for at the beginning of Mass Effect 3 was to treat this like it was a movie, and it was the movie. Yes, there's backstory to it. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. We really want people who are just picking this up for the first time to just be able to jump in. And then for the players who, you know, of course, have played Mass Effect 1 and 2, they can dig deeper. They can find out what their choices did. The team will have to be strong. Their resolve unquestionable. One of the first things that happens on the project is I sit down with Casey and we discuss what is the high-level story, what are the, the major beats that are going to happen in here, and that produces sort of a, a high-level story doc that isn't more than three or four pages long. Once we have that, we start filling in, well, what are all the missions, what are all the other little mini-stories that are going to be told, how do you go from A to B, what is that actual plot, and that's when I go to the writing team and I say, okay, Let's start filling this out. Which characters are going to show up and which ones are going to be important? Eventually we sort of have a backbone of the game and a um, critical path of what we want to do in there. Once we've done that, then writers are usually given free reign on a specific level. I had five or so levels in the game that you know were sort of my own and each writer would have something similar. And within that, they know where it's supposed to begin. They know where it's supposed to end. They know where it should fit in that sort of backbone of the story. And they're given free reign to sort of make that level their own and it goes through a lot of iteration. That's one of the keys, I think, that makes Bioware games great, especially the writing, is that iterative process. We actually go in and we're not afraid to change it. We'll change it until we feel like that all makes sense, we love that great story, and it fits in with everything else we're doing. Mass Effect 1, I think we peaked out at about four writers. We had one editor working for us. In Mass Effect 2, we went up to about six writers and we had two editors. And now, Mass Effect 3, the game's bigger, the team's bigger. We're up to eight writers. We've got two editors, and I think we've actually just borrowed a third. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. In Mass Effect 3, one of the big things we wanted to be able to do was to really deepen Shepard as a character. So you really get to express what your Shepard is feeling and going through throughout the war. We set out to create an amazing, epic experience, a story like no other, and that sort of next level of storytelling we want to do with Mass Effect 3. Yeah, it's a war. Yeah, it's giant, cool robots that we get to shoot in the face. But there is a human side to the story, and you're role-playing. You're role-playing as a human, and why shouldn't that human have an emotional component to what they're doing? This is going to be a problem. Please, remember who you're talking to. Overall, it's looking like it's going to end up being bigger than any of the games in the Mass Effect series. But also, I think the emotion, the depth of writing that we have in there has also gone up another level. When a video game can make you feel something, you know, as long as it's also fun and still entertainment, then, well, I think we've done our jobs. Thanks, Mac. Hard to believe in less than two months we finally get to take Earth back. 
As always, stay tuned to Bioware TV for more exclusive insider features and breaking news. For Bioware Pulse, I'm David Silverman reminding you to keep your fingers on the pulse.